we want to look at a couple of things, the secret ingredient to moving forward. Mark chapter 5, verse uh, 25. Here's another situation here. Two women. First of all, was a widow woman that was desperate, that was really needing to see change, but she was instructed to do something, and she went and did as God had said. My question for you is, what's God asked you to do? See, sometimes your mind will obsess and make it some big thing. Maybe it's a little thing. Maybe it's just a compliment to your spouse every morning. Maybe it's a kind word when you feel like, man, I've got to bite my lip. Maybe it's something that you should be doing in your heart. You know, I just need to change this. And so you make that adjustment and you go and do as God has called you to do. And while you do that, the man of God or your breakthrough is on its way. So, Mark 5, verse 25, it says, Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians and she had spent all that she had and was no better but rather grew worse. Can you imagine that? A flow of blood, how many years? Twelve. Twelve. Going to a doctor, twelve years. Some of our situations that we're all freaked out of, we get mad at God because we don't get it in three weeks. She was twelve years. Twelve years. Picture that. What is twelve years in French? Who, who knows twelve? Pardon me? Twelve. <laughs> All right, just making sure everyone's awake. Twelve years. She had spent all that she had and was none better but rather grew worse. So she's kind of going into this widow woman phase here. She'd spent all that she had, and it wasn't getting any better. In fact, it was getting worse. How many in your life have had situations like that? Pastor, you prayed for me, and I went home, and it got worse. Right? I sowed a seed, and I went home, and it got worse. I want you to know the story doesn't stop there. The end is not there. She had spent all that she had, and it had gone worse. She was no better, but rather grew worse. But when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him and touched his garment. So first of all, you need to hear the Bible. You need to hear the Word. It's important. You don't just begin to say, well, I'm just going to go through life on feelings. And when the goosebumps are there, that means God's there. Because there's going to be lots of days when the days are dark, and the goosebumps are not there, and God is still working. How many know the widow woman is out collecting sticks? She's picking up sticks. She's probably still hungry. She probably had thoughts in her mind that says, how are we ever going to make this? How are we ever going to make it through? How are we ever going to move forward? I know the man of God is coming and he's going to ask for something, so I'm going to gather sticks so that I'm ready when he calls. But how many know your feelings are still going to maybe be a little bit yucky? You're going to be hungry, or you're going to be scared, or your physical body is going to say, I'm still feeling sick. But then it says, but she heard the word. Okay? So the first thing you need to recognize is, number one, you're going to see in just a moment here, that she began to speak out what God says was hers. So the woman is out there collecting sticks, and she's gathering sticks, and she needed to be saying, I know that my God is going to supply all of my need according to his riches and glory. He wouldn't have said the need, and he wouldn't have said riches, if he didn't plan on meeting your need, because he's got all that you need. So my God will supply all of my need. Whatever your need is today, you need to focus on that and say, okay, all right, what is my need? My need is encouragement, or my need is forgiveness, or my need is breakthrough, or my need is to pay my bills, or my need is a job, or my need is physical. You need to begin to say, just like the widow woman, and you need to be like this woman with the issue of blood. And it said she heard the word, and then she went and did. So what's God called you to do? Step out. We know that faith says, I have it now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. What are you hoping for? You've got to have a blueprint and a plan. When I did yesterday's wedding, these people weren't just hoping to have a happy marriage. There was a plan to have a happy marriage. They were just wondering to have a happy marriage. There was a determined effort to say, we're not just hoping. We've got a plan. We've got a blueprint. And we're going to say it. And we're going to do it. Amen? Amen. All right? I had the, the, uh, the, the uh, mother of the groom. No, the mother of the bride, sorry. She was asking about the, the weddings and stuff. And I said, well, we have about a 4% four, four success rate. And she was like, what? No, I was just kidding. I said, it's going to be fine. They're good. It's all good. They're a good couple. God is good. So you need to plan. 
All right. One of the things in that ceremony that I was saying about my, my ring, I was, you always use my ring as an example, because it used to have all kinds of carvings and stuff on it. It used to have neat little, I think they were probably like a native scroll or something on there. But over time, it's all got wore off because life has happened. All right? Your life has happened, and your life is happening now. Not everything in your life is just going to be all comfortable and smooth. Right? The charge to the bride and groom yesterday was not everything's going to be comfortable and smooth. There's no promise that says you're never going to have a droughtful situation. There's never a promise that says you're never going to go through trial. You're never going to go through situations. But we know that God's word will deliver us through them all. So the widow woman was feeling like she was starving, was running out of money quick. The woman that was rather growing worse, her flow of blood, she'd spent all, she'd been to every physician. Do you realize how discouraging that would be? Do you realize how discouraging that would be? And I got to say, when we were talking about uh, Tuesday night, on, was it Tuesday night on Bible study or the Tuesday night before that? Before. before that. You guys, think about those fishermen. It's an easy passage to read. You should read it. But Master, we have toiled all night, but nevertheless, at your word, we're going to throw it into the other side of the boat. We're going to throw it into the other side of the water. We've toiled all night. Well, if you guys know anything about stinky fishermen that have toiled all night, they're not in good moods. They're smoking cigarettes. They're throwing F-bombs everywhere. They're carrying on, and then suddenly Jesus comes out and says, side of the boat. No, he said, throw it in the other side of the, the water there and believe God for a catch. And these guys said, nevertheless, at your word, we're going to do it. Amen. But I think if they were truthful, okay, in their lives, they might not have swore in front of Jesus, but I bet you they did anyway. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to sound sacrilegious, but these were a rough bunch of guys, and they had worked all night, and they were tired, and suddenly this guy comes along and says, throw it on the other side of the boat. And they said, nevertheless, at your word, we're going to do it. So what I'm trying to tell you today is when it doesn't feel good, when it doesn't feel like you want to do it anymore, when you don't feel like continuing on anymore, because you know what it feels like at 4 o'clock in the morning to be trying to be out there in a cold fishing boat damp trying to make money and just it's not working you pull that net up and it's empty your flesh says oh my word and then suddenly Jesus comes along and says he taught them he launched out into the water and he taught them the word so you can't go on your feelings they were tired they were achy you know how you get that achy feeling in the middle of the night right when I worked night shifts sometimes in the middle of the night it was so achy and you're like, oh my goodness. I can remember when I was at Stelco, it'll be 4 o'clock in the morning, and I'm like, this still, where's the sun coming up? When can I get warm and you're cold and your body's aching and you're creaky and you got to keep going? So these guys were like that. Just like the one with the issue of blood. Nevertheless, none better, but rather growing worse. But then they heard the word. Then they heard what Jesus said. And they took him at his word and they said, I will receive that. And so Jesus began to sink their boats, fill their nets. And then suddenly Satan comes along and says, Oh, by the way, you don't deserve this. You don't deserve this because God's got it only for special people. That's exactly what happened. And Simon went to Jesus and said, Get away from me. I'm a sinful man. I'm not suggesting your sin is okay. I'm not suggesting you can just do whatever you want. But the bottom line is doing whatever you want. None of those things stop what God had designed for them. Breakthrough was designed for those fishermen. Breakthrough was designed for the widow woman. Breakthrough was designed for the woman with the, with the issue of blood. Nevertheless, she was getting worse, but she said, at your word, I'll do it. Let's look at it. It says it right here. And behold, sorry, verse 25. And we read that, it says, none better, but rather grew worse. And when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment, for she said... Okay, so number one, you got to begin to move. You got to decide what you need, and you got to begin to act on what the Bible says is true. Second point, you need to open up your mouth. And she said, "If I can touch his garment, I shall be made whole." Amen. You could say it doesn't matter, but according to the first verse in Genesis, it says God said, right? According to the first part of Genesis, God said, let there be light. And God spoke, and there was light. So we know that when we put our mouth to what we believe in the Bible, we're saying something, or you're acting like the Bible is true. So to say it's not a matter of if, but when, that's true too. But today we're changing that to it's mine now. Because now faith is. 
All right? So, for she said, I, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. And immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt within her body that she was healed of the affliction. Notice, number one, she heard Jesus, but she still had the affliction. She heard what Jesus said, but she still had the affliction. She said what Jesus said, but she still had the affliction. And then she said, if I can touch him, or if I can receive from him, it's mine. And it says here that her fountain dried up. All right? And she, it says, immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. How many know that the feelings was one of the last things to come? Right? We're talking about forgiveness. It's supposed to be the theme for this morning. How many know the best thing you can do is to begin to choose to forgive somebody? How many know when you choose to forgive, your flesh is not going to follow right away? Your flesh, you're not going to suddenly get up and go, oh, I just have this amazing love for the person. I just can't wait to embrace their neck. It doesn't happen. Are you kidding me? This lady here had did everything she knew to do, and in fact it got worse, and then she began to say, but at your word, and then she began to say within herself, if I could touch his clothes, and then she began to say, I shall be made well, or my breakthrough will come, and then it says her fountain dried up, and she felt better. The feeling better was the last thing. The feeling better was the last thing. When we pray for your, you know, we, we, we'll believe God for Sandra's knee, right? And, and, and so, uh, you know, if we're believing God for her knee, well, she's not necessarily going to feel better because of her knee. But she's going to act like it's so. We had a lady yesterday who was the matron of honor. She had this great big casty kind of plasticky strap thing on, on her leg. And she, she took it off to do the ceremony. And and, uh, and so I thought, you know, it's a good little sermon there, right? She's got the support on because of her, she pulled a tendon or something. And so, but she said, now I've got to wear my high heels and act like it doesn't hurt. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, it might have been the alcohol, but by the middle of the night, man, she was acting like it wasn't hurting. <laughs> she wasn't wearing that thing anymore. And those high heels were running everywhere. Well, you know, as funny as that is, you know, maybe it was the alcohol. Maybe it was the spirits. But wait, maybe we need the Holy Spirit to begin on the inside to say, I'm going to act like it's so. She never put it back on. Okay? I'm not saying there was a big divine healing, but she began to act like she was better. Now, maybe this morning she'd go, oh, my. <laughs> but through Jesus, you're able to say, I'm going to act like I'm better. I'm going to believe like I'm better. My situation might be a dead, droughtful situation, but when she acted on the word, it said it dried up. <clears throat> now, and so immediately dried up, she felt within her body uh, that she was healed. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself, knowing that power had gone out, he said, who touched my clothes? You know what that tells me? You need to be loud for Jesus. You need to let him know what you need. You need to know, let him know what you need. And then you need to begin to say, that is mine. And then you need to be said, now I receive it in Jesus' name. You see, you can't do this by just supposing God knows. Because God does know. But he didn't say, I'm just going to do everything that floats through your mind. He said, ask of me and I'll give you the nation. He said, speak out what you need. You have not because you ask not. That's an actual scripture. You have not because you ask not. So it must be important for you to ask. Right? Right? Because if Jesus was moved by need, you got to get this. If Jesus was moved by need, well, pastor, he knows I have a need. Pastor, he knows the a woman. Pastor, he knows the woman with the issue of blood, 12 years. He knows the need, he knows the need, he knows the need. If he knew, if he met your need based on need and he didn't meet Roger's need, then he would be a respecter of persons and it's not how it works. Because we know that the need in Africa is greater today than Simcoe. So if God's going to somehow meet our need in Simcoe, then he better be meeting the need there. But we know that's a whole other sermon and a whole other study on covenant. But the bottom line is, the bottom line is, the prince of the power of the air, the thief, the ruler of this world, roams around doing what he thinks he can do. And we as Christians need to begin to say within ourselves, this situation is going to dry up. This situation is going to change. Begin to speak, stand flat-footed and say, no longer are we going to be in drought. No longer are we going to be going backwards. No longer are we going to begin to say, oh, I'm not healed. Or, oh, I don't have anything. And we're going to begin to say, my God 
shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory. But he did say it's a choice on your part to believe that you have it now. Mark 11 says that. By faith you open your mouth and you say, you say to this mountain, be removed. He didn't say think to the mountain. He didn't say write to the mountain. He said, you speak to the mountain and you say, be removed in Jesus' name. So she heard the word and she said within herself, if I can touch his garment, I shall be made whole. And then Jesus said, who touched me? Make them aware of what you need. So you need to begin to say it. Maybe you need to write it down. And you need to begin to believe it. You need to begin to declare it. And then you need to begin to look for it. Are you looking for your healing? Are you looking for your breakthrough? Are you looking for your blessing? I heard a lady there yesterday. She was